the Colorado River is in crisis. That's right. Despite last winter's record snowpack, the Colorado River is still in crisis. That's why I want to discuss why we continue to export Colorado River water to foreign countries. Hello and welcome to Time Bomb. The Colorado River supplies water to more than 40 million Americans. It's one of the most important freshwater sources in the country. But this water is for sale. And countries like China, Japan, and Saudi Arabia, they're buying. Now, before I get started, I do want to mention a tool that helps me put these videos together. As you may have noticed, it takes a lot of time to produce a video like this, especially one that's politicized or controversial. I do my due diligence. I read articles from both sides, but that can get time consuming. So I've been letting the app and website by Ground News do the work for me. Every day, this news comparison platform processes thousands of articles from all around the world and puts it into one place so I can see multiple perspectives. For example, last month, the Bureau of Reclamation announced next year's water cuts. After I read through the official press release, I did my due diligence. I read through several articles to be sure I understood the full picture. And that's where ground news has become resourceful. I'm excited to have them sponsor this video. Over on the Ground News website, we can see the story on next year's water cuts has 50 articles published on it, and it's mainly covered by the left and center-leaning news sources. This is what Ground News calls a blind spot, a story that's underreported by one side of the media. Now, I find it interesting that none of these sources are from government-owned publications. It's also interesting to compare the headlines or sort by things like factuality to understand how media altering a single word or phrase can easily shape public opinion. I like that I can follow specific topics such as infrastructure, the environment, or even natural disasters. Obviously, I find ground news to be a very valuable tool, and I think you will too. Go to ground.news slash timebomb to stay fully informed. Right now, you can subscribe for 30% off unlimited access. Just use this link before October 15th. Make sure you use my link so they know that I sent you. Each year, roughly 100 billion gallons of Colorado River water is exported to China. To understand exactly how this works, we need to understand how we currently use our water resources. Agriculture consumes approximately 80% of Colorado River water. The remaining 20% is used by municipal, industrial, mining, and recreation. If we are ever going to restore water levels at Lake Mead and Lake Powell, we have to tackle the biggest water users. And the biggest user of Colorado River water by far is not lawns, it's not Las Vegas golf courses, it's not the Bellagio Fountain. It's agriculture, and of all the crops grown in the region, alfalfa and hayfields are amongst the thirstiest. Agriculture water use makes up 80% of total Colorado River water consumption. Half of that goes towards the production of alfalfa. Farmers in the Southwest have long been drawn to alfalfa because of its reliability. The crop stores well and enjoys a steady demand. However, alfalfa requires water lots of water. Growing just one acre of alfalfa in California requires five acre feet of water, making it one of the most water intensive crops alongside the likes of almonds and pistachios. Not only does alfalfa use a lot of water, but much of the West's agricultural land is devoted to growing alfalfa. Colorado, Utah, and Arizona farmers irrigate about 4.1 million acres of crops, and nearly half of those acres are in alfalfa. The Colorado River Basin's largest single water consumer is the Imperial Irrigation District in Southern California, which draws some 2.6 million acre feet from the Colorado River each year, nearly all of which goes to grow crops. About one-third of the district's acreage is devoted to alfalfa, which annually consumes at least 400,000 acre-feet of Colorado River water. To put that into perspective, 
The alfalfa grown in the Imperial Irrigation District consumes more Colorado River water than the entire state of Nevada. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, nearly 20% of alfalfa produced in the West is shipped abroad. Alfalfa exports reached a record high in 2022, delivered by strong demand from China, Japan, Saudi Arabia, and South Korea. And foreign companies didn't stop at just purchasing U.S. alfalfa. They decided it made more sense to own the land outright and the water rights that came with it. Let me introduce you to a Saudi Arabian firm called Almirai. Almirai is the largest dairy company in the world. Well, a few years ago, Almirai purchased 1,700 acres of alfalfa farms in the Palo Verde Valley in California. Soon after, Saudi Arabia eliminated their own domestic alfalfa production to preserve its own water supplies, while continuing to import alfalfa from America. Foreign corporations are increasingly purchasing land in the southwest of the United States. Much of that land comes with unlimited access to the valuable groundwater under the soil. Combined with nearly year-round sunshine, this has made the area a magnet for companies looking to grow water-intensive crops. Over the last 20 years, foreign companies have purchased more than 250,000 acres of land in six southwestern states specifically to grow alfalfa and other cattle feed. And then there's China. The United States exports more alfalfa to China than any other country, followed by Japan, South Korea, then Saudi Arabia. China imported 1.8 million tons of alfalfa in 2022. 1.4 million tons of that alfalfa was grown in the United States, accounting for about 80% of China's total imports with a value of 717 million US dollars. In total, the United States exported 2.8 million metric tons of alfalfa in 2022, with China taking 57% of these exports. Alfalfa is the third largest agricultural product in the United States, but only 6.5% is exported annually. However, in the southwestern states, which are big producers of alfalfa and close to shipping ports, about 20% of their alfalfa is exported every year. These high export states are also the states that happen to be grappling with the water scarcity issue, meaning that the most water strapped states are the ones shipping the most alfalfa overseas. But farmers in the Southwest argue that producers simply can't opt out of participating in a global food system that they have a right to sell their product to the highest bidder wherever the destination is. One thing's for sure, we need to do something to reduce how much Colorado River water we consume. I'm not sure what the solution is, but I think keeping the water inside the United States is a good place to start. Please let me know what you think in this video's comment section. Now I know it's easy to focus on alfalfa. But exports of other thirsty crops such as almonds and pistachios need to be part of this conversation as well. We need to make some hard choices and prioritize exactly where we want our dwindling water resources to be used. Should we continue to export our water via water intensive crops? Or can we rebalance our portfolio so that we use water more effectively at home, like filling up our reservoirs? As always, thank you for watching. I'll be back with another video next week. In the meantime, please check out some of my other videos and consider subscribing. I really value your support.